What's going on, PMC fans? Dr. V here today, bringing you our final week seven final power rankings. Now, I'm not going to be doing them throughout the playoffs. There's just not really a point. Uh, just, I don't know if they'll do something just announcing who moved on from this week's playoffs or whatnot, but I'm not going to be doing that. I will do a final playoff announcement as to who made the playoffs. So, if you just want to skip power rankings and go straight to that, that's fine. Uh, it'll be near the end of this video. Uh, it'll be a different graphic like it's been the past two weeks. So, yeah. Um, but let's get started with power rankings this week. So, bringing up the rear at number 12, we have Max and the Maximum Charizards. Now, this week he just... Jack just out-prepped him and outplayed him, is what it basically came down to. Uh, he had answers for all of Max's mons, and he Max ended up losing a 6-0 to Jack this week, so... It's unfortunate when opponents play out, out-prep you like that, but it does happen, sadly, and... Yeah, it's... It is the result. So... Yeah, that's about all I can say about that match, really. So, moving on to number 10. We have Dolphin and... 11, sorry. Dolphin and the Volcade Zoroark. Now, he did lose a stall battle this week, is what it was, really. Um, I didn't... It came down to the end where it just... Spencer had to stall out because... That's the only way that anything was going to happen throughout the match. It had to timer stall it out, and Spencer ended up having... I don't remember if it was more HP or more Mons, but... Let me double check that real quick, so... Yeah, Spencer had one more Mon than... than Dolphin did, so... Uh, I don't really see the point of stall battling once you get to to near the end there. Like, you know you're going to lose if you just stall at the timer, so why not just risk it and go for certain attacks and try to throw your opponent off? But yeah, this loss, this loss really mattered, and unfortunately it does drop him down to number 11 since the next people won. So... Moving on to number 10. We have Roshan and the Detroit Solgaleos. Uh, they they played really well this week. They had... They went up against Orso and the Windsor Weavals. Basically, they... He burned a lot of Orso's team. Which made... It made his Registeel pretty much useless throughout the match. And allowed him to take on more months the, and in the end Mega Dancy was able to just come up with a little mini sweep there and get the kills that he needed to win so it was an entertaining match if you haven't seen that I'd go watch it. it I know it's up on Norso's channel for sure so go ahead and check it out so on to number nine we have Kyle and the Mesky Mesperts uh, I can't say anything about this match because it never happened. Um, but I, the reason I left Kyle at number 9 was because I feel that it actually would have been a really good match had it happened. Uh, they Their team was matched up fairly nicely and last time Kyle actually got the win with a 3-0 victory over Aki so who knows what could have happened with this match. And, I'll go more into details about um, the complications that this match set up with Kyle not playing. So, yeah, it's unfortunate, but people, things do come up. It's it's called life. We, everyone has stuff going on, and sometimes you just can't make these matches. And you know what? It happens. So, yeah. Moving on to number 8, 
We have Orso and the Windsor Weavals. Now, why did I put him at number eight? Um, good question. No, I'm just kidding. So yeah, I left him at number eight. Uh, he didn't play bad this week, so it, and the fact is that the result of this match didn't really cause too much issues. So I think that it would have. Um, I don't know. I just felt like this match could have really gone either way, depending on how a couple more things would have played out. So I just left it as it is, and. I felt that the number eight was an appropriate spot for him. So yeah. Coming up at number seven, we have Shadow and the Connecticut Crocodiles. So this um, week he So this week he did lose a 1-0 really close match to Trev um, this was by far a sorry 3-0 he lost a 3-0 to Trev so he lost a 1-0 last time I believe yeah so he did lose 3-0 to Trev this week so uh, yeah really Trev showed off his re skills this is really what it is here but it was a good match to watch there was nothing there's a couple things that I would have changed here and there on a couple of the sets and mons but overall I think that he had prepped pretty decently could have brought a little bit of different mons but he didn't so and Trev ended up picking the 3-0 victory this week so on to number six, we have CJ and the Baltimore Oriolus. Um, so he did lose this week to Adam, a 3-0. And Genesect really just ran rampant this week um, with Mega Gyarados getting some kills in there as well. So this was actually a really interesting match to, to see. Uh, there came to a point where CJ's Manaphy got critted, where it might have mattered, I'm not 100% sure. I don't know what other sets Adam was running. Well, I do, but I didn't do the calcs. So, yeah, I'm not sure if it mattered getting that crit where he did on Manaphy, but I do think that Manaphy could have brought the game back to him in the end. So... Um, yeah, it was, it was a really interesting match to watch. Definitely something that people should check out if they have the time. But unfortunately, this does drop CJ from his spot from last week due to the other people winning. So, moving up to number five, we have Adam and the Kansas City Kakunas for exactly what I just said. He, he did beat CJ this week, 3-0, so he was able to pick up a good win here and yeah there is it's just what what it is right now he moved up to number five this week nothing else I can say about that match moving on to number four we have Spencer and the Washington Talons now I know I complained about this match being a soft fest when I was talking about Dolphin position and I'm going to complain again, because again, I really hate Stahl. So he, to his credit, he did what he needed to, to pick up the win. Uh, if he hadn't done the Stahl Fest like he did, he, he wouldn't have made a playoffs probably, depending on what happened. But Blissey was just out, able to outstall things, and it's... Yeah, he ended up winning. Technically, it goes as a 1-0 since it was a battle timer timed out, but he did win by one mon, so I guess that makes sense. Why? It's a 1-0. I don't know what I'm thinking. It's late for me. It's like 2 a.m. while I'm recording this. 
so yeah um, again I'm not a fan of Stahl it's just I don't see the point of it but he did what he needed to do and he ended up winning and making playoffs before whoops spoiled something uh, just yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys can figure out who made playoffs and stuff pretty easily, but I'll verify for you here in a couple minutes. So moving on to number three, we have Jack and the Maryland Mutant Shells. Now, this was again, he did win the 6-0 victory over Max. And again, he just, it seemed like he completely out-prepped Max and he was able to just counter Max's team completely this week. So it was it was definitely interesting to see what he can do. I think that he can continue to, to continue this run through the playoffs. So we'll see what happens there. All right, moving on to number two. We have Trev and the Atlanta Braviaries. Now, this one again, he did win 3-0 against Shadow, and it was it was an interesting match. There was not much that... There's really nothing I would have done differently in Travis Slot. He played his months how he needed to play them, and especially his reuniclus, he used it to its full advantage and was able to pick up three kills with it this week. So, yeah, good job to Trev. And number one again is Aki this week. Uh, this week, um, I did consider dropping him down to number two or three due to how Trev and Jack played, but I just didn't. I felt like that would be an insult to Aki more than anything, just because of how how he had played the past couple of weeks. He had played really solidly, and he had come out with victories since the last loss to Kyle, I believe, was his only loss, so. Um, yeah, his, his only loss had come to Kyle and Adam, and he did beat Adam the week before, so I definitely think that he would have, that he might have beaten Kyle again this week to reclaim. Uh, spot so I don't know again I'm not sure what uh, I don't know how this match would have played out but I left I left him at number one just because of how he had played up to late so yeah those are your power rankings for this week guys there's not much else I can say about this they it was interesting to do power rankings for sure I hadn't ever done anything like this before so we'll see what happens in the playoffs and I don't know maybe if JSPX wants to make some type of playoff video we'll I might join in on those but again my schedule is super weird hence the recording at 2 a.m. right now for this so moving on. let's do all these playoff things so we're going to start off with one of our first matches. We have Aki and the Portland Crobats versus Orso and the Windsor Weavos. This match is, in my opinion, it's definitely swinging more towards Aki's favor. Uh, Orso is really going to need to think of creative sets and he's going to need to bring his A game to take down all of Aki's threats, but again, Orso does have a really solid team, and he, if he uses it properly, he could come out with a win this week. Our next match is the Baltimore Orioles, coached by CJ, versus the Kansas City Kakunas, coached by Adam. This is a repeat of this last week, so... Uh, I know that CJ did a little video on, on their head-to-head -head and all that, so I think currently Adam has the head to head and I'm sure that CJ will definitely want to want to take back the tie for that head to head I know personally with with me I am I'm currently tied with J-Specs on 2-2 two two each so 
I know, I know, definitely know how these little rivalry things go. So, this match is definitely gonna be one to watch this week. It should be a good match throughout. <clears throat> and yeah, that's it should be interesting to see who wins that match. <clears throat> All right. So next up, we have Trev and the Atlanta Braviers versus Shadow and the Connecticut Crocodiles. Now, this match, I'm hoping to see Shadow step up his game from the past last week. He he almost won the first time with a narrow 1-0 loss and then a 3-0 loss this time. So. Yeah, it showed, it showed that he can definitely match up against Trev's team with the narrow loss the first time. So I'm definitely looking forward to this match. I think it'll be a really good match to watch. And he will see who ends up winning this. So the last match is going to be Jack and the Maryland Mianchos versus Spencer and the Washington Talentlands. This match, I actually have them very even. Um, both of them have been playing really well lately, and there is not much that I can really say about what either of them have been doing to put one over the other. Uh, I think just in terms of teams, I would have to actually give the... <clears throat> Sorry, I would have to give the edge over to I think in terms of just teams I'd have to give the edge over to Spencer actually so um, I just like the way Spencer's team is built a little bit more than Jack's so we'll see we'll see what happens throughout these playoffs so, so yeah guys this is the last that's it for for this week and this is my last power rankings I'll be doing uh, I will be joining season 2 of the PMC as a competitor so I'll go ahead and be uploading those videos to my channel and everything will be golden. Uh, yeah, that's nothing else I can say. It was fun guys. Hopefully you enjoyed these videos. I know I had fun making them even though I'm not very good at it. So until next time.